Hello and good morning. This is a talk summary of uh, the article which is titled as Management of Women with Chronic Renal Disease in Pregnancy. I hope this will help with your MRCOG revision. Um, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you can keep yourself updated with any content that I regularly upload. So, um, chronic kidney disease, there is a low incidence of it in pregnancy as many women with significant renal insufficiency are beyond childbearing age or infertile. The changes during pregnancy include increase in renal size and marked dilatation of the pelvic calcio system. Renal plasma flow increases early in pregnancy and reaches a maximum by the second trimester, falls to about 50% above non-pregnancy levels in third trimester. The GFR increases significantly and therefore serum levels of creatinine and urea fall. Pro protein urea is common but should normally not exceed 300 mg in 24 hours. The outcome of the pregnancy depends on the degree of renal impairment, the presence of chronic hypertension, protein urea, underlying renal pathology. GFR increases in pregnancy, um, but could fall during or after pregnancy, especially with pre-existing renal disease, chronic kidney disease stage 3 to 5. The significance of protein urea alone. So protein urea is indicator of renal impairment in pregnancy. Renal insufficiency coexisted in 62% of women and 40% of chronic hypertension. Preterm pre delivery rate of 50% and fetal growth restriction rate of 25% was noted. 20% progressed to end stage renal disease within five years. If there's a positive urine uh, protein urea dipstick, in the absence of infection, then this should be quantified either by um, using a 24 hour collection of urine for protein estimation or by protein creatinine ratio on a random sample, sample of urine, ideally an early morning specimen, followed up with a protein creatinine ratio measurements. Persistent protein urea is 500 milligrams in 24 hours before 20 weeks of gestation should prompt consultation with a nephrologist. So pre-pregnancy counselling, you want to have an MDT approach, you want to discuss fertility, pre-pregnancy outcome depends, um, which will depend on the degree of renal insufficiency, you want to discuss things like risks which include preeclampsia, fetal growth restriction and preterm delivery. Um, in your counselling, you want to talk about the long-term risks and risks of deterioration in renal function following pregnancy. Single embryo transfer should be recommended to women undergoing in vitro fertilisation, baseline renal function tests and optimal control of hypertension um, should also be achieved. ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers are contraindicated in pregnancy. They should be um, either swapped to something or stopped. So medical management involves an MDT team, so your midwife specialists in maternal medicine, nephrologist uh, in tertiary centre, baseline renal profile, including ser serum, urea, creatinine, electrolytes, albumin and fulbo count, urinalysis and urine culture. Assessment of protein urea, 24 hour collection of urine or by a spot test for total urine, protein creatinine ratio repeated every four weeks or more frequently based on results. Maternal anemia, um, because of decreased erythropoietin production and shortened red cell survival, managed by either oral or IV iron therapy, erythropoietin can cause hypertension or aggregate, aggravate pre-existing hypertension. Blood transfusion, maintain hematocrit, whereas um, where him erythropoiesis stimulating agents are not safe to use. Renal biopsy during pregnancy associated um, can be associated with complications like severe bleeding, requiring blood transfusion, um, pre prefer to deliver early and investigate postnatally. 
So indications for acute dialysis during pregnancy are similar to those that are for non-pregnant uh, patients. So severe refractory metabolic acidosis, electrolyte imbalance, especially severe refractory hyperkalemia, volume overload leading to congestive heart failure, pulmonary edema that is unresponsive to diuretics. Dialysis may be initiated earlier in pregnancy if there's an acute deterioration in renal function because of increased risk of fetal demise. Obstetric management, so early dating scan to estimate gestational age, um, nuchal and anomaly scans. Um, anomaly scan, um, do, especially looking out for a detailed scan of the urinary tract to allow for evidence uh, of inherited conditions such as obstructive uropathy. Regular scans every four weeks from 28 weeks, check growth and lycra volume, prophylactic low-dose aspirin for prevention of preeclampsia, blood pressure monitoring and adequate control um, determ determines the outcome. Blood pressure maintained at no higher than 140 over 90, um, drugs like methyl dopa, calcium channel blockers, hydralazine and libitalol are safe to be used. Preterm labour is common. Um, the, the prompt treatment of bacterial, uh, vaginal and urinary tract infections, including asymptomatic bacteriuria, can be helpful in prevention of preterm labour. Women with recurrent UTIs should be given antibiotic prophylaxis throughout pregnancy. There's no evidence to, to suggest safety of oxytocin receptor um, antagonists, um, atosiban, in women with renal insufficiency. Um, delivery should be planned at or near term if there is no provided there's no uh, deterioration of um, of you know of, of, of mum's condition. Early delivery for obstetric indications like preeclampsia, fetal growth restriction or rapidly deteriorating maternal renal function. Obstetric indications considerations are a main deter main determinant for cesarean section. Women with nephrotic syndrome should receive prophylactic heparin um, in pregnancy and six weeks postpartum. Postnatally, they should, they should attend a combined clinic and continue care with a nephrology team. And contraceptive advice um, should be given promptly to avoid any unnecessary pregnancy. So pregnancy in women on chronic dialysis. So frequency um, of um, Pregnancy uh, with chronic dialysis is increasing 1 to 7 percent. Um, conception is likely with residual renal function and those beginning dialysis. Incidence of pregnancy is lower on peritoneal dialysis than on hemodialysis. Spontaneous miscarriage is common, 21 percent reaching the third, second trimester. Preterm delivery is common. Mean gestation age of delivery is 32 weeks. Contributes to low infant survival rate of 30 to 50 percent. Perinatal outcome is better um, if, if, if they conceive prior to starting dialysis than those who conceive after starting dialysis. No significant difference in infant survival between who receive uh, peritoneal dialysis and hemodialysis. Polyhydramnios is seen in 42 to 79 percent of pregnancies. Maternal complications including hypertension in 40 to 80 percent, hypertensive crisis, preeclampsia, anemia and placental abruption. Approximately half of these women will be delivered by a cesarean section. So protein, so advice for nutrition is protein intake is increased um, to 1.5 grams per kilogram per day on hemodialysis and 1.8 grams per kilogram per day for on peritoneal dialysis. Weight gain of 0.5 kilograms per week. Fluid intake is to be assessed individually, taking into account native urine output and the type and the frequency of renal replacement therapy the woman's receiving. Calcium requirement is 1.5 grams a day, achieved by high calcium um, dialysate. Measurement of 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels each trimester and supplement if low. Dialysis um, usually results in high phosphate levels, but if they're low, then oral phosphate um, supplements should be given. Folate, um, dose of 5 mg per day should be given. Vitamin C, thymine, riboflavin, um, niacin and vitamin B6 should be supplemented, need to be supplemented. So management of hemodialysis, frequency of dialysis increased to at least 20 hours per week. 
aim to maintain pre-dialysis urea of 15 to 20 millimoles per litre. Maternal volume depletion and hypotension uh, should be avoided and biocompatible um, um, smaller surface area dialyzer to reduce ultrafiltration rate per treatment. Maternal diastolic blood pressure should be maintained uh, between 80 and 90. Bicarbonate and potassium in, dial in, dial in dialysate adjusted based on serum um, chemistries to avoid the electrolyte imbalance that can result uh, because of more frequent dialysis. Management of peritoneal dialysis continued safely during pregnancy, increased number of exchanges during pregnancy and fill volumes of peritoneal dialysis fluid may need to be reduced to 1 to 1.5 litres. It's more practical to do this by switching to automated peritoneal dialysis. As pregnancy progresses, size of enlarging uterus, it may become impossible to continue with peritoneal dialysis and therefore should be switched to hemodialysis. Possibility of peritonitis still exists. Um, increased incidence in pregnancy has not been reported. If caesarean section is necessary, perform extra peritoneally. Alternatively, temporary uh, hemodialysis can be instituted postpartum following traditional caesarean section. Management of anemia, erythropoietin dose may need to be increased by 50 to 100 percent to maintain the hemoglobin between uh, 10 and 11 grams per deciliter. In addition, IV iron supplementation required to maintain iron saturations of at least 30 percent. So pregnancy in renal transplant recipients, so 12 percent, 12 percent of transplanted women are of childbearing age and the number of kidney transplant recipients who conceive seems to be increasing. Miscarriage rates and congenital anomalies is similar to the general population. 95% uh, of gestations uh, end successfully. Um, ectopic pregnancy rates are higher related to adhesions from previous surgery and peritoneal dialysis. Hypertension predates pregnancy in about 70% um, of kidney transplants. Uh, kidney transplant recipients, superimposed preeclampsia and urinary tract infections. Acute by bacterial pyelonephritis is relatively common, high risk of developing gestational diabetes. Incidence of preterm delivery, premature preterm premature rupture of membranes and fetal growth restriction is as high as 60%. Opportunistic infections are more common um, in immunocompromised pregnant kidney transplant patients. Of these, rubella, cytomegalovirus, Toxoplasmosis, herpes simplex, and hepatitis B and C can affect the fetus. Time, timing of pregnancy: there should have been um, there should have been no rejection in the previous year. Graft function should be adequate and stable. There should be no or minimal protein urea. The women should be on maintenance immunosuppressive suppression and stable dosage. Um, there should be no acute infections that can affect the fetus, for example, cytomegalovirus. Comorbid conditions like hypertension, diabetes should be optimally assessed and managed. Pre-pregnancy counselling. So you want to talk about impact of pregnancy on acute reje rejection and graft loss. Risk of acute rejection correlates with the pre-pregnancy serum creatinine levels as well as interval between transplant and pregnancy. Long-term survival of graft appears similar in those pregnancies to who, um, who do not become pregnant. Um, acute rejection in pregnancy occurs in 9 to 14%. Incidence of serious episodes, serious episodes of, reje of rejection is in 5%, which is similar to the rates observed in non-pregnant transplant patients. Antenatal management, so test for CMV, HIV, herpes simplex, hepatitis B and C, um, those that are found to be cytomegalovirus negative should have their titers rechecked in each trimester. Oral glucose tolerance test or in cases where there's strong suspicion, blood sugar monitoring should be arranged to diagnose gestational diabetes. Um, alpha, uh, methyl dopa, libetalol and nifedipine are safe to be used to manage hypertension. Magnesium sulfate prophylaxis um, um, can be given safely in severe preeclampsia, loading dose of magnesium is the same. Infusion of magnesium must be decreased according to the level of elevated creatinine over the normal pregnancy level. Uric acid is a less helpful marker since it can be raised in transplanted patients without 
preeclampsia. So management of immunosuppressive regimes, so continue at pre-pregnancy dosages, prednisolone, azathioprine, cyclosporin, um, tacrolimus are safe to be used in pregnancy. Mycophenolate mofetil are what should be avoided in pregnancy because of increased risk of first trimester pregnancy loss, malformations including external ear and facial malformations like cleft palate and lip. Little evidence regarding safety of rituximab, um, serolimus or uh, everolimus so should be avoided. Breastfeeding on uh, immunosuppressive drugs is controversial because of concerns um, for the effects of these on the baby. New evidence shows the low levels of drug excretion into the breast, breast milk. Labour management, so delivery should be timed for 30 to 40 weeks. Vaginal birth is the preferred route. Prostaglandins and cytosine are safe to be used for cervical ripening or, or induction. Um, the allograft located in the false pelvis does not obstruct delivery of the fetus. Caesarean may be necessary for obstetric indications or if there's concerns related to severe pelvic osteodystrophy. Um, early liaison with an involvement of the urology surgical team or renal transplant surgeons is advisable um, when elective cesarean section is planned. And stress dose, dosage steroids should be administered to women who are on immunosuppressive dosages of steroids. Neonated problems and neonates can have thymic atrophy, um, transient leukopenia or thrombocytopenia, um, adrenocortical insufficiency, septicemia and cytomegalovirus slash hepatitis infection. So um, this is a table that is going through effects of chronic renal disease on pregnancy. So it kind of, um, although we've covered most of this, but it, it, it kind of lists all the different renal diseases specifically and what impact they can have uh, on the pregnancy. So um, I'll, I'll leave um, you to read that one. So National Kidney Foundation classification of chronic kidney disease. So it's based on the GFR. Um, so you can see normal GFR is above 90. Kidney damage and mildly reduced um, GFR um, is 60 to 90. Moderately reduced GFR is 30 to 59. Severely reduced is 15 to 29. And kidney failure is less than 15. Well, thank you so much for listening. I hope this um, presentation was very useful for you. And if it was, then please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also leave a comment if there's any um, topics that you'd like to for me to make any videos on. And I hope that you're enjoying um, this regular content that I have been uploading on this channel.